ladybug. I hate them! Don't you fucking come near me. Oh, he's so erratic with his behavior. Stop it! He's gonna come over here and he's gonna land on me. He is flying all over the place like a crazy person. Ah! God damn! Oh, I feel like I should just bat him down. I don't hurt animals, but I am about to kill a ladybug. Oh my god, you fucker! He's gonna come over here. I already can tell you. I never knew ladybugs could fly like that. Like flies. He's flying like a fucking house fly. God damn it! Please land. Just land. Just land. Just not on me. Ah! Oh my god, you fucking little dickhole. Did you land? Did you land? I think you landed. Hey guys, today is another episode of Raw Advice. I'm considering changing the name to Raw Answers. Tell me what you guys think. Raw Advice, Raw Answers. Let me know in the comments of this video what you guys prefer. I'll change it over if that, if that gets a better vote or something. I kind of like it better, but you be the judge. What I didn't anticipate with this Raw Advice series is just how many questions I was going to get. A lot. So I'm not going to try to elaborate as much. I would like do 10 minutes on each question before so I'm not gonna try and do that but I'm still gonna answer them to the best of my ability and I'm gonna get going now hey guys future Christy here you're gonna go back in time as I'm editing this video I realize uh, this video is long you'll look at it and you'll be like really 30 minute 30 minute video you expect me to watch that no <laughs> you can if you want to but basically in my last raw advice question and answer video I said everybody ask me as many questions as you have in the comments of this and I will answer them and there was a lot more than I anticipated and I said in the beginning of this video which you will see soon that I said I'm not gonna ramble on and on and I did I rambled on and on and on because I'd like to not just answer your questions with like a yes or no answer I like to you know, I like to give you a little something something. I'm really sorry if this video is really, really long, but I tried my best to answer all of the questions in the comments. My stupid phone is a piece of shit. Next time, this is just a little disclaimer for next time, and I don't know if I said it in the end of this video, but you see I'm editing it right now, so I'm realizing all the mistakes. Next time, I'm going to have you guys ask whatever questions you have, and I think I'm gonna categorize them. And then each time, so like say I get a lot of questions about infertility, that's gonna be its own Q&A video. If I get a lot of questions about my filming setup, that's its own. If I get a lot of questions about uh, relationship advice or bullying or something, that's gonna be its own video. So I'm gonna try and make it a little more streamlined because right now I feel like it's just 45 minutes of me rambling. And back to past Christy. First question is from Bear Rugs. Hi Christy, so I need advice about my sister who is much younger than me. I'm 26, she just turned 12 years old, and like most kids her age, she tries to be very active on social media. The problem is, for most of her life, she's always been social and outgoing, which is a good thing, but at the same time, this kid does have a filter does not have a filter. She says whatever comes to mind and for the most part does not realize if someone might be sensitive to, it, sensitive to it until afterwards. I'm all about letting kids be kids because I would also like her to be considerate of other people's feelings. Her mouth gets, in her, gets her in trouble, but not only that, she's always craved attention. Any attention, good or bad, and gets her into trouble with people at her school. She's been bullied by different girls. They tell her she's ugly. Nobody likes her. She's annoying. One girl was going off on her because my sister said two words to this girl's boyfriend and another went off because she said my sister stole her so style. What the fuck? Like seriously stupid shit. Anyway, I don't have experience with this kind of girl drama because for the most part, I just always kept to myself in school. And although she's dealing with it and puts on a brave front, I wonder how it's really affecting her. It hurts me that people would say these things about her, but sometimes like the only thing worse for her than getting bad attention is getting no attention. I've tried talking to her as often as I can to try to get her to tone it down a little, but she seems like she will listen for two seconds and do whatever she wants anyway. How do I guide her to make better decisions and stop messing with these kind of people? Damn. <clears throat> that is a question of all questions. So I just went on about a 10 minute rant about this question and realized that I don't like the answer that I gave because I don't feel like I gave a very good answer. I feel like I just jimbled jumbled my way through the entire thing. And then I reread the question and realized that your main question in here was how do I 
guide her to make better decisions and stop messing with these kinds of people. It's really hard because she's so young and 12 year olds feel like they are right all the time. Kids in general feel like they are right all the time. No matter what you say, you're just some old lady to them. Trust me, I'm your age, so I get, I get that it feels like you just can't reach them, and you can't reach them. They're so at that age that if they were six years old, you could sit down and have a conversation, make them look you in the eyes, and be like, listen to me. Twelve is such a hard age because they're almost a teenager. I have a 12-year-old little sister, by the way, so I totally get it. Um, but they're almost a teenager. They feel like they're really cool, and they know everything, and pushing the boundaries of social norms with people is not beyond the realm of what normal kids do. 12 year olds are mean, bullies, they say mean shit. I remember that age in school and I remember being picked on like nobody's business when I was at sixth grade. And all I can say is that she's doing it for some reason, whatever, to get the, ten the attention, like you said, she doesn't care, negative, um, you just, she just wants attention in general. Uh, just make sure she's getting enough attention at home. Uh, make sure that people are listening to her and talking to her often. Uh, sometimes, though, they don't want they don't want you to talk to them because they're in their own little world. I remember I was like 12 and I was listening to Linkin Park and I was so badass and I thought that the world was over if everything was over. I just thought I knew everything and um, I didn't want people to talk to me. I didn't want. I just didn't want it. So honestly, probably keeping her off of social media is a good thing. You can't make her get off of her phone, but she doesn't pay her own phone bill, so snatching that shit up real fast if stuff goes awry. Um, I'm the type of tough love person, which I don't have any kids, so I can't be the first one to be like, with my children, I. Um, I don't have any, but all I can tell you is, I remember being 12 and I remember feeling like the world was over with everything, and I was, I was a pretty shy kid. I was trying to fit in and be popular and um, it, you know, it didn't do me very well. I don't know. I don't really know what to tell you. All I know is kids are tough at that age and just support her the best you can. Let her know that you love her. Um, they're not the smartest kids in the world, but they feel like they are. And even if you tell them they aren't, they aren't going to listen to you. So uh, honestly, my opinion is just to sit her down, look her in the eye and say, look, if you want people to stop being mean to you at school, you have to stop doing this. Because you're doing this is why people are doing this. If you stop doing it, people are going to start being nice to you. Because I can promise you this. I was nice to everybody in high school. Everybody. I treated everybody the same. Every, well, you know, to the max of my ability as a fucking 15-year-old. I was, I was nice to everybody and it benefited me because nobody can be that mean to you if you're really nice to them. Nobody really wants to be that mean to you if you're really nice to them. If you say inappropriate shit all the time, people are gonna want to have shit to say to you. Being outspoken and saying crude things and uh, saying things to people that, that might hurt their feelings, think about it first and then say it. If in your mind you even think for a half a split second that it might hurt somebody's feelings or offend them in some way, just don't say it. I don't know, I don't have kids so I'm not the best at all this kid stuff. Second question from Hannah Riley. Do you slash have you ever had stretch marks? Also totally related, but what camera do you use? So yeah, I totally have stretch marks all over my body. When I first met my now husband when we were dating, we went through this little period where, you know, when you first start dating somebody you don't eat very much around them, and then when you get really comfortable around them and start living with them, you realize fuck this, I'm gonna eat whatever I want. There was like a two week period where I ate like enchiladas every single day and I must have gained a butt ton of weight because I remember one day looking down at my stomach, the front of my stomach by the way, like where pregnant women get them, and seeing a red line on there and I was like, what is that? And then the next day there was like 50. And so I have a butt ton of stretch marks on my stomach. Most of them are faded down to a light color now because I've had them for many years and I don't really get any new ones. But yeah, my stomach is like tiger scratch marks. So yeah, don't feel weird about stretch marks at all. They, I am covered in them, just covered. I use a Canon Rebel T3i, uh, bought it a few years ago on a whim and I do like it, I like it. From Kaylee Goheen, she asks, what is your full-time job? I am a receptionist slash lead receptionist. Those positions are changing. I work at a veterinary hospital. This is from Radness McAwesome. <laughs> That's an awesome name, by the way. How do you handy the, handle the shitty emotional roller coaster of PCOS on a daily basis? I eat a low-carb diet. When I eat a high-carb diet or just a typical standard American diet, 
I am a raging hormonal, headachey, no periods. When I get them, they're horrifyingly painful bitch. When I eat a low carb diet, I am a normal human and I get my periods every 28 days. I am emotionally stable. I am nicer to everybody. I am happy. I don't get headaches. So all I can tell you is that is the way I handle it. It actually makes a huge difference for me because PCOS is an endocrine disorder and it all has to do with insulin and sugar and so I just cut sugar out of my diet. I don't eat it. I don't eat carbs. I don't eat rice. I don't eat pasta. I don't eat bread. I don't eat any of that. I eat vegetables and some meat and I drink water and I sometimes have diet soda because that's my vice and don't bitch at me about it anybody because I don't want to hear it. But it seriously it's change, it changes me altogether. I ate carbs for the entire month of January and I felt sicker in January than I have felt in a long time. I even had to go to the doctor because I was puking on the daily and I was like, why am I puking? Started eating a low carb diet and immediately stopped and my headaches went immediately away. So that is the way that I handle it. Emotionally, I handle, that's that keeps me emotionally stable. Um, I don't try for a baby anymore. When I was trying for a baby, uh, my emotional stability was very rocky. I was crying all the time. I hated all the pregnant ladies. I look at a pregnant lady and just, I hate you. You're so, you know, I just, they were lucky and I didn't get to be pregnant. Um, but I hate to be like, oh, my diet cured everything. But it really did. When I started eating a low carb diet is when I realized that I can change my my body with diet I mean and 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 change my hormones and all that sort of stuff so that is that's how I do it I'm really sorry that that was probably not the answer you were looking for fuck from Alexis girl she asks would you ever consider doing a room or house tour um yeah <laughs> you've seen parts of my house and you can see what they're like um I will officially do officially that is not a word I will officially do a house tour when my house is finished. That may not be for another year or two. I am so sorry. I, I might do like little bits and pieces, but my floors still need to be sanded and refinished. My walls still need to be, um, we, we re-drywalled the entire upstairs. My bedroom right now has floral wallpaper and floral wallpaper ribbons and flowy yellow curtains from this old lady. And it's still like that because I just don't have time for it. So that doesn't reflect my style at all. So doing a house tour right now would basically be showing you a 90 year old lady's house. Um, parts of it, my house I love, parts of it I just loathe. So I will do that eventually, just not right now. From Amanda Rainwater, she was talking about PCOS and how she has thinning hair because of it. Do I have any tips on dealing with thinning hair? And yes, I do. I wear tape and hair extensions. There are um, some on this side and some on this side. Uh, I have drastically thin hair because of my PCOS. And, um, you know, you can't really tell in the videos. It's very, very, very thin. It's not as thin as some people, so I'm not complaining. It's not like I'm trying to be like a martyr here in the community, but no, um, I wear tape and hair extensions. I color my hair to fun colors. Try not to overprocess your already thin hair if you have it. My hair is super thin, so I totally get it. It fucking sucks, I'm not gonna lie. Um, buy fun wigs if you, if you feel weird about your thin hair. Just don't Here's my thought. I always thought for a long time, I need to deal with it because I don't want to cover it. No. Fuck that. I'm going to wear fake hair, and I would wear wigs if my hair was really thin because I don't want to feel self-conscious all the time just so that I have my natural self. I mean, if you're unhappy with it, change it. These tape and hair extensions change everything. You cannot see them. Even when I pull my hair up like this, you can't even see the wefts. They're comfortable. They don't hurt. They don't damage your already thin hair. Try tape hair extensions. I have a bunch of videos about them. I will try and put them, link them in the description of this video. From Maria Rubio, she asks, Hey girl, since you mentioned that you have a very low sex drive, do you ever want, think that, do you ever wonder or think that your husband will become unfaithful? No, he's not the kind of guy. He's not the guy that would cheat on me. Um, he gets stuff. I, just because I don't have a sex drive doesn't mean he doesn't get sex or other things. Sorry, not going to go into too much detail there. But yes, he is not sex deprived so if he did cheat on me and eh, he would be fucking wifeless so uh yeah i'm not the kind of girl that would deal with that shit at all mm -mm, nip it in the bud first time it happened done with you no 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 uh but he's not gonna cheat on me he's not the kind of guy i just trust him in that completely uh but if he ever did which he won't uh well then he ain't gonna have a wife 
From Danielle K. I just turned 18 and I'm graduating high school soon. My boyfriend is making all these plans about living together and going away to the same university. But what if it all doesn't work out? What if we meet different people while at university and neither of us have enough money to live by ourselves? I love him a lot and I want to stay with him, but I have this constant gut feeling that it isn't going to work out. I don't know how to tell him all this. I don't want to burst his bubble. What would be the best way? God, you guys are giving me these real serious questions this time. I might have to do two of these this week because you guys have so many questions that I don't want to just like be like, well, just tell him. And the next question, you know, I want to make sure that I answer you guys. So Danielle, um, just be honest with him. I know that you probably, you guys can't afford to live separately. Um, but living with him, if you don't want to, is not the answer. I, I'm going to give you a backstory on myself, which you may not know. I was engaged to a guy through my entire high school. I was engaged to a guy that I thought would be my forever husband and we loved each other so much and I loved him and I, you know, blah, 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 blah. end of the story was we weren't together and I spent my entire, we, we don't end up together, he's not my husband now, um, and I spent my entire high school life with this guy, with this guy who was in the military by the way, so we weren't even together in the same state. I spent my entire high school life with him and... And I wasted all of those years on somebody that I wasn't even sure was going to work out. So if you already have doubts now and you're not certain that you want to be with them forever for the long haul, um, you can just enjoy your time together now and see how it goes. Or don't even get in that situation in the first place. It's a really hard conversation to have. But don't just not have conversations because they're hard. Telling my ex that I didn't love him anymore and that I loved my new boyfriend, Zach. Zach was my boyfriend then. Telling him that I loved him more and that I didn't want to be with him was the hardest conversation I've ever had. But had I not had it, I'd be married to a guy that I didn't fully love and I would have missed out on this opportunity that I have now. So keep in mind, these shitty, hard conversations, they come with making your life better in the long run because if it's not what you want, don't do it. You live one time. I hate to be like, YOLO, but you live one time. And keep in mind that don't waste any part of the short life that you have wasting it on something you don't want to do. You may love him now and you may love him later if you don't know. I mean, you feel in the gut, in your gut, like how are you going to feel in four years from now <laughs> if you do stay with him and get a, a place with him and all this stuff? Don't feel bad for hurting his feelings. I mean, I'm not to say like hurt everybody's feelings because, you know, you're the only one that matters, but do keep in mind that your feelings come first and and do what feels right to you. This is the shittiest answer. I am so sorry, but just to tell you, like, I, I'm not the type to not talk to somebody about something because I'm afraid of how they're going to feel. It's a shitty conversation to have, but you have to just be nice about it and just be upfront and be real. And those conversations always end well because you feel like a weight's been lifted off your shoulders. You're obviously concerned enough to message me about it. So I would just definitely recommend being honest with him and just telling him your fears and concerns and let him know that, you know, we may do this, but it may not work out. It may not end the way we both think that it's going to. And um, I just want you to, you know, know that these are my concerns and you don't want to do it, you don't want to do it. So, um, yeah, I, fuck, I'm sorry. Also, you're so young, enjoy your young life. Everyone's gonna tell you that, everyone's gonna tell you. Enjoy your young, young life, don't, don't get into serious relationships too fast. It's so true. Oh, you are, you, you have no idea how free it is to be 18 until you're old like me and you look back on that time and you just go, oh, if only, these are the years of your life where you are just gonna, you get to do the most amazing things. So, so ma remember that, just remember that. Emily B asks, my question for next time is what is your septum piercing like? I am thinking of getting one done and I was wondering if you could talk some pros and cons. I have no cons of my septum piercing. It was one of the least painful piercings that I've gotten. It just makes your eyes water. It, that, that was really, I mean, I have a high pain tolerance, so it wasn't too bad. I did have both these pierced, uh, like my snake bites is what you call them. I had those pierced for a few years and this one was the most painful one I ever got. This one wasn't too bad because it was my first. And this one wasn't bad at all. I do just wear a small little septum ring in it. But I didn't have it in for years and it never closed. So I, I'm happy with it. It was no problem at all. Heather Hopes asks, can you show your lighting slash filming setup and where you got your setup? 
Um, I will do a video all about that. I hate to be like, watch my next video. Um, but right now I'm filming on this filming setup, so I have to go get my vlog camera and show you that way with the SD card and all that kind of shit. So yes, I will make a full video on my filming setup and all that sort of stuff. And that might make it a little easier for you guys. So yes, I will do that. I'm really sorry that I'm like jerking you around like that, but yeah, I will. From Mallory Nicole 123 if you were to get pregnant, would you be excited? Yeah, I would be really excited. I think more than anything, I would be... Things in my life have changed so much since I started um, going from trying to have a baby when we felt like we were secure. We were renters before. We had a lot more money because we weren't homeowners. We make more money now, but we have less money because we're homeowners and we have all these expenses. But yeah, um, I think I would be freaked out, completely freaked out. I think I would be like shitting my pants. Uh, I think I would go through like stages of not so I would feel I would feel completely out of control and crazy and then I think I would become the most devoted mom ever and probably be that psycho pregnant lady that like reads a hot five six hundred books and you know and I, I know a lot about pregnancy already I'm a freaking birth doula for crying out loud but I uh <laughs> yeah I think I would be really excited I do think I would shit my pants though all those pretty lies asks do you ever watch your videos after you've edited and uploaded them or watch them with others like friends or your husband um <laughs> I do watch my videos after I edit and upload them, which is kind of weird. Some people are like, no, I can't do it. I don't mind hearing my own voice. I don't mind seeing myself on camera. It doesn't bother me at all, especially because I got these good angles. But uh, yeah, I, I rewatch my videos sometimes. I don't rewatch all of them. I have a really hard time watching my first videos back before I really knew what jump cut editing was. Uh, they make me cringe, like really hardcore. But yeah, I have watched them a few times. So uh, yeah, I don't mind rewatching my old videos. And yes, I've only sat down and watched a couple of my videos with friends, like the collab that me and Marie did, the Heads Up Challenge. I watched that with my family because honestly, I'm not to like toot my own horn or anything, but that video makes me laugh my ass off. There's just something about us two. The rapport we had going on in that video like was amazing. Giselle Monique asks, what do you use the baby powder for in the background? A baby powder? Right here? I put it in my hair when I have not showered and I don't have dry shampoo because it makes my hair not greasy looking. Another question from Giselle Monique says, another question I have for you is getting annoyed. Oh, <laughs> another question I have for you is, do you ever get annoyed by how people just lose weight and find motivation and stick to it? And then it just doesn't seem to be happening to you. I know you've touched on not having motiva motivation before and damn it, it sucks when you don't. Uh, have any Facebook groups you follow or something? Uh, yeah, it really annoys me that other people can stick to it and stuff like that, but I've gotten past that point in my life. Um, I hate that I'm, you know, overweight and stuff, but it's my own fault. Yeah, I don't have that motivation that I can stick to. I've had it a couple of times and I've had really good results, but then I just go back to eating and, you know, shit just piles back on. I am part of a few weight loss groups, but to be honest, they just annoy me because I don't have that motivation. These people are so like gung ho about losing weight, it just drives me nuts. But yeah, it's really annoying actually. I, you know, whatever. Was that, was that, oh, whatever. I love how I end a question with whatever. What a bitch am I? Jen Hype, Hebert, Hybert says, Hi Christy, I love your openness. Can you give any weight loss advice? Have you tried any Garcinia Cambogia or green Cambogia or green coffee bean stuff ever? Do you think those are just fakes? I'm curious if anything has ever worked for you. The only thing that's ever worked for me is cutting my calories back and exercising more. Not even with the exercise, I can lose a shit ton of weight by just cutting my calories back. Um, Garcinia Cambogia or Cambogia or green coffee bean stuff, that's all bullshit in my opinion. The only way you're ever going to lose weight is if you reduce your calories and up your exercise. You don't have to up your exercise, but if you want to get in really good shape, you probably should do that. Um, I've been starting, and I'm talking like just only gone twice, to go to the gym. I'm, we're going to probably start lifting. Uh, <laughs> lifting is the best way to lose weight. Becoming a weightlifter, don't worry about getting bulky, it's not going to happen. The only people that get bulky are on freaking anabolic steroids. But all I can tell you is lift heavy and uh, those are the best ways to lose weight. Granted, I've never done it that way. I've always just cut my calories back significantly. Those are the best ways that I know of. I have a full video on how I lost 25 pounds in six weeks, by the way, which I'll also try to link in the description of this video if I feel so inclined. Um, but yeah, I list my full meal plan and stuff that I did there. So yeah. Uh, 
Kyla Angela asks, question for your next video. Do you still work at a veterinary clinic? Yes, I do. I'm interested to hear more about your job since I also work in a vet clinic. How many doctors are there in your clinic? How long have you worked there? Do you enjoy your job? And what is your position? And has it changed since you first started? Um, okay, I'm going to answer those in bullet point. Uh, how many doctors are in your practice? Uh, four. We have four doctors. We have two full-time doctors and two part-time doctors. How long have you worked there? Three and a half years I have worked there. Uh, do you enjoy your job? I love my job some days and I want to murder everyone on other days because I am a receptionist. I hate to call myself just a receptionist because I do a sh so much more than just what you think a receptionist does. God, I feel like I'm a manager of the front for crying out loud, but I don't have that title, I suppose. I kind of do because I have all the responsibilities of that. Um, so I'm dealing with people, not so much as animal care. Um, I'm doing a lot of people care, but I have learned so much and I feel like I, my... I am just so much smarter after starting that job and I, I, I'm more sharp and I know a lot more about animals and yeah, I just really love it. Um, what is your position there and has it changed? Um, like I said, yeah, it has do totally changed. My title has not changed. I am just a receptionist. Kathy Ger Gervin? Sorry. Ger <laughs> what the hell? Kathy Gervin says, I've only recently started following you but I love your Instagram and YouTube. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, my question is, how old are you? I am 27 years old. Probably a lot older than a lot of the people here on the YouTube. Jenny Laver asks, I have PCOS as well and wanted a baby so bad. I ended up adopting my now husband's daughter and my niece and nephew and I'm so happy. It's as if I had them. I'm so thankful I did not have to go through the pain of giving birth. Do you ever think about adopting? Um, we've thought about it. We've talked about it. It's not something that's in the near future for us because it's not that... The only reason that we're not having kids now is not because I can't get pregnant. It's just the fact that we just genuinely uh, do not want children right now. Um, so yeah, we have thought about it and if we ever do decide to have children, we'll probably pursue some more fertility things if that ever happens, which I don't foresee happening, but it might. Um, but adoption is amazing and wonderful. It's just really, 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 really expensive. Grace Burgess asks, I was just wondering how PCOS has affected your life and what symptoms have affected you the most. I have it too, but obviously as I'm only 16, I haven't tried for a baby, but my doctor told me it's still possible even with PCOS. Um, yes, it is still possible to get pregnant with PCOS. Um, if you don't know what that is, guys, it's polycystic ovarian syndrome. You just look it up. There's a shit ton of stuff that comes along with it. The only major thing that has affected my life with it was infertility back in the day. Um, now, not so much a problem. Really painful periods. Um, very irregular periods. When you want to try for a baby, that's a tough part. Um, but like I said, if you just eat a low-carb diet, it really changes everything, you guys. I'm so serious on that. It really hasn't affected me in that horrible of a way. Some people it really messes up, but I've tried to manage mine as best I can and I think I've done a decent job at it. So it used to affect me infertility wise. I was really bitter and really upset about it. And I'd probably have a lot of babies right now if I didn't have infertility, but I do. And so that is the main way that it's affected me. Lauren Lambert asks, uh, I remember you mentioned you were on the keto diet last year. I have PCOS and I've heard really good things about it. What are your thoughts about being ketogenic? Um, I am on the ketogenic diet right now is what I call it. I say low carb, same thing. Atkins, keto, they're basically the same thing other than they're really kind of the same thing. People just don't like the word Atkins and people love the word keto. Uh, keto is high fat. It's a high fat, low carbohydrate diet. So you eat a lot of avocados, eggs. Um, you can eat a lot of meat if you want. Makes me feel kind of shitty when I just kind of live off of meat. Um, but I love it. it. I feel so good on the ketogenic diet and I feel so shitty on the regular diet. So I'm telling you right now, it's definitely worth looking into. I would do the healthiest version of keto that you can. Um, I eat more low carb than I do high, high fat. I don't like eat tablespoons of coconut oil or anything. It just, it kind of makes me feel like blah sometimes. But yeah, definitely is an amazing diet. I love it so much. And I'm not, it's just, it's helped me out. It's helped me out with everything. Headaches, periods, all that kind of shit. Brianna Hunter says, Christy, I have two questions. I also have PCOS. It really boggles me how many of you have PCOS. Holy shit. And I've been told by multiple people that I will not be able to have kids. I'm 19, so at the moment it hasn't affected me much. But my first question is, have you ever thought about adopting or were you just thinking it'll be too much because of all the criteria you have to meet? My second question is, do you have any advice for a big girl that is trying to date? I feel like no one takes me seriously or wants a relationship with me. They just look at me like they're doing me a favor because I'm fat and gross. No one would ever want to date me. I know I am lovely. Oh, and no one would ever want to date me. I know I am lovely. How do I make everyone else see that? I love your videos. You are so inspiring to me. Well, Brianna Hunter, I've already answered the adoption question and the PCOS question. Yeah, it's a lot of hoops to jump through and it's a lot of money and it's just not something that I'm interested in. Um, as far as the 
dating. Uh, cut to Christy at a later date. So I'm editing the video now, and it is a totally different day, totally different outfit. So sorry. What happened was my SD card died in the middle of this answer. And the answer was, what was the question? So one of the questions, your question basically was, how do you get other people to see you as beautiful as you see yourself? And the way you do that is with confidence. So know who you are, just be yourself 100%. Do not worry about what other people think about you because when you start to worry what everyone else thinks about you, you start to portray that. I, I was the same way. I used to worry what everybody thought about me and I used to think things like, what, what are we even worried about? Okay, so you think guys maybe like feel sorry for you and that's why they date you? I can promise you one thing. If a guy doesn't want to date you, he not going to date you. So. Uh, he's not gonna go out with you on like a pity date and if he is he's a total fucking cocksucker and I'm really sorry but I would just say be yourself be confident in who you are if you truly like yourself you say you know you're lovely then know that don't worry about what other people think a guy is gonna like you for you meaning that sounds so cliche but you'll know when a guy really likes you and when it's like the right guy because he's going to treat you totally differently than other guys. Another thing I really highly suggest, and I tell this to all women, is not to be pushy. Don't be pushy on guys. They're very simple-minded. I don't mean that in a sexist way at all, but what I mean is if a girl's coming on too strong, it's immediately like, no, bye. They hit the road, they're done. Don't come on too strong. Be aloof. Um, be just yourself, be who you are, and then they'll come to you. But if you're pushing at them and texting them constantly and don't, don't worry about any of that. Don't try to make them like you. Just be who you are and if they like you then that's the case. I hope I answered your question. I'm really sorry if I've just been rambling on and on and on. This is the longest video of all time by the way. So I'm really sorry. That is my recommendation. Don't even worry about anybody else. Just be your shit and then if they like you they will like you, and if they don't, well, they can go suck a dick somewhere else because they can just bye bye now. Yetzibeth Piedra. I am. Yetzibeth Piedra. I am fucking so sorry. I can't say that. I feel like an asshole right now. Uh, what kind of music do you listen to? Uh, favorite singer, Lana Del Rey. I listen to a lot of. Uh, I don't know what you would call it. Like, um. You're golden, I gotta stay high all the time to keep you off my mind. Ooh. My cat is meowing down here like an asshole. Uh, Lana Del Rey, a lot. Lana Del Rey is my number one. Like, if I could never listen to anybody else in, for the rest of my life, it'd be Lana Del Rey, would be the only person I would listen to again. Um, I love, oh god, I like gangster rap. I like, I like Taylor Swift. I like, um,. I like, uh, I don't know you guys, I don't know who I like, I like all music, I just like what songs I like. Lana Del Rey though, I'm just gonna say, like she's my number one, I am obsessed with her. From Andrea Williams, uh, Christy, have you watched the show My Big Fat Fabulous Life? If so, what do you think? I asked because she has PCOS too, I'm wondering if you think she represents it well. Never seen it, don't even know what it is, I don't have... I don't have cable, so uh, I don't see a lot of these shows that are on TV that aren't like big, you know, uh, big shows like Sons of Anarchy, you know, all those shows. So I watch those, but I, I have never seen it. I'm sorry, I don't know. Elizabeth V asks, uh, do you think you could be happy single? If you had never met your husband, how would your life be different? And any advice for single people searching for a relationship? I totally think I could be happy single. Um, I think... If I were single, I'd probably be a whore. <laughs> I don't know. I've only had sex with two people in my entire life, so I don't know what it's like to be sleeping around, but it kind of sounds like, I don't know. I never got to do it, so I don't really know. But uh, I don't know. I think I could totally be happy single. I'm just one of those people who definitely doesn't need somebody else to be there to be happy. Uh, but I love my husband so much, and I love having him around. But when he's not around, I'm totally fine. So um, any advice for single people searching for a relationship? Find somebody who is that you feel completely comfortable around. Uh, when I met my husband, I knew. I knew that, I mean, we were just young teenagers. He was 15 and I was 17. I'm 27 now. Um, 
And uh, I just knew. I knew that he was my guy. I just I, I could feel that I was going to fall in love with him. So all I can tell you is be yourself 100%. Uh, and don't be pushy. Don't text him too much. That is one thing that I think that girls nearly need to get into their head. If he doesn't text you back, don't text him again. Don't message him again. Um, play hard to get and it will work. I promise you that. Playing hard to get got me my husband and it got me my last boyfriend and it got me all the other boyfriends that I've ever had. Play hard to damn get. Guys like that shit. Alan Hannah 2011 asks, I wanted to know if you would be happy now having kids when you've come to peace with it. Should it happen naturally by some miracle? You seem to have some guilt about passing on your cluster headaches, which I totally get. Is if I ha Because I have epilepsy and I totally wonder if it would be passed on to my son. Um, would I be happy if I got pregnant? Yeah, I... Sure. Like I said before, it's sort of the same answer. Yeah, totally would be happy with it even if I... Because even though I've made peace with it, I mean, it, whatever happens to me in my life, I'm going to give it 110%. So if that means being a mom, I'm going to be the best and most psycho mom you've ever met. <laughs> Sarah Nicole asks, um, hey, I was wondering if you ever struggle with acne as a side effect of your PCOS. Your skin looks great. And then some total cocksucker said that something mean to her, which I'm going to delete that comment right now. Sorry, Sarah Nicole, for that total cock-sucking piece of shit commenting on your thing. It's not acne. I don't get acne like cheek acne or anything, but I do get forehead pimples. And at the worst of my PCOS symptoms, yeah, totally. Hormones screw me up big time. Uh, like I said, low carb though, it really changed everything for me, you guys. It, my skin cleared up. My All of my issues went away, so I really highly recommend it. Bits of Glitter asks, I love how confident you are and you carry yourself with leading me to my question. I know you joke about your body from time to time and chinsty, but to me you seem very confident about your body. I was wondering how you deal with the day-to-day -day struggle of loving your body and how you look. My boyfriend is coming down to see me this summer, long distant relationship, and I'm finding it difficult to want to wear shorts or a bathing suit around him. I'm personally a size 12, please help. Well, I'm a size 14, 12, sometimes on a good damn day. I'm not very confident in my body, but I just pretend like I am. Uh, that's the way that I do it. Just don't constantly call yourself fat. Don't constantly berate yourself. Just wear the skin you're in because it's the skin you've got. Maybe try to work on it if you feel uncomfortable with it. Um, but you honestly, like, I make jokes about it because it just is what it is. People look at me and if they see fat, well, I like to just, like, show them that like, I know I'm not a size 2. Um, but I don't give a shit because I really like food and I eat too much of it and it's my favorite thing and you know it's not healthy to be overweight but you know what so boo hoo I just don't give a shit what anybody thinks of me I just really don't give a fuck and I think if your boyfriend loves you and you guys are in a relationship together he doesn't see you that way he doesn't Jordan Dash asks, what is your favorite Hanson song? Ooh, I wish I would have thought of this beforehand so that I could answer that question better. My favorite Hanson album is Underneath. It is the best album ever. Specifically the uh, album of uh, where they did Underneath Acoustic. God damn, I used to listen to that every single day on my way to school. Like, oh my god, I love that album. So any song, um, I love the song Underneath. I love the song Penny and Me. I love the songs, um, oh, let me look and look. Um, Strong Enough to Break. Oh, shit. Miss Arc Beauty asks, I love myself and everything, but I want to be skinny, and my so-called friends call me fat. What am I supposed to do? Uh, well, they're not your friends if they call you fat. They're total bitch fucking assholes if they call you fat. Sorry, but it's true. Um, I, I'm not gonna be, I mean, no, that's not always true because me and my friend are both overweight and we both call each other, she calls, my nickname is Chins to her and we're both gunty and that's our thing and I, that's just, if they're calling you fat like, hey, you're such a fat, you're so gross and fat, not your friend, total asshole. Um, if you want to be skinny, I would just say work towards it, do healthy things to get yourself there. Everyone's going to be like, oh, you know, on diet and exercise, I said the same thing. But, um, you know, if you love yourself, you love yourself. But if you want to lose weight, you know, that's just part of it. Like, you know, I love myself, but I want to get thinner too. Um, I would just definitely say, uh, if you're, I would definitely just confront them. If they call you that, probably stop, tell, tell them to stop calling you that. But if they, you know, if they, 
If they don't, well then they're not your two friends because friends don't talk to each other like that. And honestly, if they care about stuff like that, they're way too concerned about your life and they need to just move on and just love yourself for who you are. That's so cliche, but it's so true. Just stop giving a shit what anybody else thinks about you because it's not going to get you anywhere but being upset about yourself. So, um, I, I don't know. I, 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 I. Alright guys, I think those are all the questions. I'm so sorry if this video has been like the longest video you've ever watched ever, but uh, I just really like to answer all of your questions in these because I hate to leave anybody out. If I left your question out, I am really sorry. My phone is a piece of shit and it keeps scrolling through all these comments and every time that I it landed a comment, my phone shuts off and then I have to re-scroll back through, so I think I missed some. So I'm really sorry guys, but if you guys had a question that you wanted me to answer and I did not answer it, please leave it in the comments of this video and I will be better about making sure I screenshot all of the questions so that I have them all when I need them. Like I said, any question that you guys have, I mean anything that you have, please leave them in the comments of this video and I will make sure to answer them. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you would like to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, those are all at Raw Beauty Christie. I post every single day to Instagram. Also, if you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube What? Also, if you guys would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, it will update you when I put out new videos. And I thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you at my next video. Bye. Is, my room is a frickin' pigsty right now. There's clothes all over the floor. Hair. Floor. Cords. Desk. More trash. When you see a really cool Instagram picture that I'm taking, the picture turns out looking like this, and the before started looking like this. So it's a really important to remember that these things that you see online, so like you may be like, oh my god, her eyelashes are perfect, her eyebrows are perfect, drawn on, fake. I dye my hair, some of this is fake hair, um, my background isn't clean, it's so dirty, like my house is, is a wreck, you know, and it's, it's, it's hard to remember that the perception of the way that things really are, like you see me right now and you're like, Christy, you're not even overweight. What?